Hi, my name is Andrew Nevins. I'm with the Division of Infectious Diseases at Stanford University School of Medicine. In this video, I'll be talking about Epstein-Barr virus latency. The learning objectives for this video are to understand the lytic, latent, and reactivation stages of EBV infection, and to explain EBV latency and persistence. Recall from the previous video on acute EBV infection that Epstein-Barr virus is one of the eight human herpes viruses. In addition to the ability to cause acute symptoms, one of the hallmark features of the herpes viruses is their ability to maintain latency in particular cells in the body and then potentially reactivate to cause different disease processes later. Epstein-Barr virus is one of the two gamma herpes viruses along with human herpes virus 8. The gamma herpes viruses replicate in lymphoblastoid cells and then maintain latency in either lymphoid tissue, as is the case with EBV, or in monocytes and B lymphocytes, as is the case with HHV8. This video will primarily focus on Epstein-Barr virus. Recall that EBV first infects epithelial cells in the oropharynx. There, it replicates and can then infect B cells by binding to the CD21 receptor on the B cell surface, resulting in internalization of the virus. Either EBV causes an infected cell to enter a lytic phase, in which new virions are produced, or a latent phase, transforming it into a cell with potentially unlimited growth potential. The lytic cycle results in the production of infectious virions. EBV can undergo lytic replication in both epithelial cells and B cells. In epithelial cells, lytic replication directly follows viral entry. In B cells, however, lytic replication usually takes place after reactivation from latency. For lytic replication to occur, the viral genome must be linear. The latent EBV genome is circular, so it must linearize in the process of lytic reactivation. During lytic replication, viral DNA polymerase is responsible for copying the viral genome. The lytic stage ultimately results in the production of infectious virions. In the lytic stage, gene products are produced in three consecutive stages. Immediate lytic gene products act as transactivators, enhancing the expression of later lytic genes. Early lytic gene products serve many different functions, including replication, enhancement of metabolism, and blockade of antigen processing. Lastly, late lytic gene products include proteins with structural roles, such as the viral capsid antigen, which helps to form the viral capsid, and others that help EBV evade the immune system. Unlike viral replication for many other viruses, EBV lytic replication does not inevitably lead to lysis of the host cell because EBV virions are produced by budding from the infected cell. Acute EBV infection of epithelial cells typically results in lytic infection and destruction of the cell. When B cells are infected with EBV, a small subset of infected B cells enters into a lytic phase in which rapid virus replication results in cell lysis. The majority, however, establish a latent infection without active replication or release of virus. So how does EBV maintain this latent stage? When EBV infects a B lymphocyte and enters the latent stage, its linear genome circularizes to form an episome or an extra chromosomal element which is then copied by host cell DNA polymerase and integrated into the nucleus of the host cell. The result is a transformation of the infected B cells, which acquire the capacity to proliferate indefinitely. In latency, only a portion of EBV's genes are expressed. In vitro, these latently infected B cells express only 10 of the approximately 80 genes encoded by the virus. This limited expression of latent proteins enables immune system evasion. The state of latent infection is maintained by the ability of the viral nucleic acid in the episome to transfer itself as host cells divide. This is performed by the Epstein-Barr nucleic acid 1, or EBNA, protein, which binds the viral episome to the chromosome during B cell division, allowing the viral genome to be maintained in the nucleus of the B cell. Little is actually known about the specific requirements for growth and survival of EBV-infected B cells, however. It's also important to note that the host immune system, particularly the host T cell response, plays an important role in not only controlling active viral replication during acute infection, but also in the successful restraint of EBV-infected B cells to keep the virus in the latent stage. In fact, in the setting of T cell deficiency or depletion, 
EBV lytic and latent gene expression may continue unabated. Therefore, patients with T-cell defects are at higher risk for developing EBV-associated syndromes. So far, we have discussed the lytic and latent stages of EBV infection. Many, if not most, adults harbor EBV-infected B lymphocytes that have this potential for unlimited growth. However, some B cells can go from a latent to a reactivated state in which the viral genome, still transcribed by the host cell DNA polymerase, relinearizes and ultimately transforms the infected B cell into one with unlimited and at times unregulated growth. Exact triggers that cause infected B cells to reactivate are not entirely clear, but an important one is the immune system. For example, in patients with T cell deficiencies, EBV lytic and latent gene expression may be prolonged and continue uncontrolled. In fact, severe T cell immunodeficiency in humans, such as occurs in organ transplantation and AIDS, is associated with lymphoproliferative syndromes involving B lymphocytes naturally infected with EBV. It is important to note, however, that immunodeficiency does not account for all EBV-associated B-cell reactivation or all EBV-associated lymphoproliferative disorders. B-cells that have been reactivated may be capable of indefinite growth. Although the exact gene products that result in this transformation are not completely known, in general, this growth is a consequence of some sort of viral gene expression. Two of the EBV latent genes encode proteins that transactivate, or increase the expression of, other viral genes. For example, Epstein-Barr virus nuclear acid 1 leads to transactivation of other EBNA proteins, whereas EBNA 2 transactivates the expression of two EBV latent membrane proteins, LMP1 and LMP2. LMP1, for example, can act as a direct oncogene in some transformation assays. Other Epstein-Barr virus latent gene products can also transactivate the expression of some B-cell genes, for example, some B-cell surface molecules. Reactivated EBV-infected cells can ultimately transform into a number of different types of malignancies, which will be the subject for the next video.